I've been playing Pokemon Infinite Fusion the fan game with over 210,000 different Pokemon combinations for just about a year now. And over the course of that year, together, we have beaten this game over 30 times, which is insane. But there's something that I have never done, not on stream, not as a video, not even on my own. I've never just like beaten classic mode before. No special rules, no monotype, no specific Pokemon, just done a hardcore Nuzlocke of the classic mode on the game. So that's what we're here to do today. If you didn't know, hardcore Nuzlocke means if a Pokemon faints, it's considered dead. The level cap is the next leader's ace, no active items can be used in battle, and we play the games on set mode. If you like the video, my voice, or just like me as a person and you haven't yet, please consider subscribing. It's the easiest way to support me and it's the best way to help make sure my videos see as many people as possible. Also, if you don't mind liking the video and leaving a comment, I really appreciate that stuff too. But anywho, let's jump into it. Starting off from Professor Rose Lab, we're gonna go ahead and actually grab Squirtle as our starter Pokemon because it was always the starter Pokemon that my brother picked, so I always picked either Charmander or Bulbasaur. Plus like, Pokemon Red for life, am I right? Anywho, after we take care of Rando, it's time for us to pick up a bunch of new friends before taking on Brock. Over on Route 1, we grab ourselves a Patata. On Route 22, we grab ourselves a Spearow. We then grab our Pikamuku Gift. We grab our Rock Ruff Egg. And then a Tangela in the Secret Garden. In Viridian Poor, so we grab a Weedle. And we grab ourselves a Mankey over on Route 3. Over in Pure City, we go ahead and catch another Mankey to swap it out for Tyson. Then over on Route 2, we grab ourselves a Hoot Hoot. Then we go ahead and grab another Spearow so we can go ahead and trade it for Belly over in Viridian City. Before we face off against Brock, we're going to start fusing up some of our friends. First up, Mankey and Tangela are going to go ahead and give us Tanky. Then we're going to go ahead and fuse up Tyrogue with Weedle to get ourselves Wee Rogue. Before facing off against Brock, Tyson is going to go ahead and evolve into Kakrogue. And then our Kakrogue is going to go ahead and evolve one more time into B Rogue. And with our team set up, it's time for us to take on Brock and his Rock Pokemon. He starts off by sending in Geoji, and we send in Tanky. A Karate Shop does just over 50% as the Geoji goes for a Rock Polish. On the following turn, it goes for a Rock Tomb, doing basically nothing, but it does lower our speed, and we can take it down with another Karate Shop. Once Dignix comes in, it goes for a Dig, which is super annoying, so I swap out, sending in Tyson. Going for a Fake Out and then a Tweedle, we manage to get the Poison off, which is awesome. Once Dignix goes for another dig, we swap back out into Tanky, tanking it, and he goes down yet again. After getting hit, we swap back out into Tyson, and after going for a fake out, the poison takes it down, and with that, we've defeated Brock. Outside of Mount Moon, we're into Nurse Joy, who's tending to this wounded Geodude. When Brock comes over to investigate, Nurse Joy suggests that they take the Geodude back to the Pokemon Center together. Maybe get to know each other a little bit more, but Brock is too focused on reviving this rock and nothing will distract him. And Nurse Joy leaves, alone. We're gonna go ahead and grab our Magikarp outside of Mount Moon. Inside of Mount Moon, we grab ourselves a Geodude. At the back of Mount Moon, we run into Team Rocket and they look like they're doing something really nefarious. The three Rocket starter Pokemon are standing on these weird platforms. And after our Rocket Grunt hits a button and everything explodes, blasting off all three of the Pokemon and Team Rocket. I wonder what they were trying to do. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab ourselves our Helix Fossil. Next up is the Neckins over on Route 4. Before facing off against Rando, we trade in Cerulean City to get ourselves a Charmander. Before facing off against Rando, we need to build up our team, first fusing Charmander and Squirtle to get ourselves Squirtmander. Next up, we're gonna fuse Pidgey and Ekans, and the result is this weird little pedans. Next up, fusing Gyarados and Geodudes is gonna get this the absolutely precious Gyarados. And leveling up a little bit first, our Squirtmander is going to go ahead and evolve into a Warmander. And then, one more time, into a Warmillion. Next up to evolve, Hand is going to go ahead and transform into B-Chan. Next up, Pedans is going to go ahead and evolve as well, transforming into Pidgeans. And then it's going to evolve one more time, getting a heck of a lot bigger, turning into Pidgebok. And that face is as surprised as I am. Over on Nugget Bridge, we run into Rando. He lets us know that he's captured over 40 Pokemon and he wants to show us them all. But he only has four Pokemon in this party, so I'm pretty sure he's a big liar. Starting off with Coral, he sends in his Neoto. A Poison Sting does basically nothing to us as we go for a Rock Tomb, bringing him way down into the red. After Rando heals up, another Rock Tomb brings him down into the red yet again, and a second one takes it out. 
When his Mantata comes in, it goes for a Seismic Toss, doing what Seismic Toss does, and we follow up with a Magnitude, getting an 8 and an Oko. When Charizard comes in, we go for another Magnitude, and now that this thing is part Poison and not Grass, it's quad effective and it goes down. Finally, his Abra comes in, just to get knocked out, and with that, we're moving on. Over on Route 24, we find ourselves in Abra. We run into Bill, who's trying to fuse himself up with a Pokemon, and while his experiment is a complete success, he's disappointed because he wanted to fuse himself with something a little bit more readable. So we help him defuse the situation, and where did the Rhydon go? Now it's time for Space Off against Misty and her water Pokemon. She starts off with Jigglydean, and I send in two mouths. A Thunder Fang takes the Jigglydean down pretty low, and a second one takes it down. When our Ace Oddu comes out, we go for a Thunder Fang, doing about 30%. On the following turn, we go for a Glare to get the Paralysis off, and then we just start crunching. And after she heals up, we manage to take it down quickly enough, earning our Cascade Badge. Now it's time for us to grab a bunch of new encounters. First is going to be our Togepi Egg over in the daycare. An Oddish over on Route 5, a Pikachu over on Route 6, and a Drowsy over on 11. And you know what we find in Diglett's Cave. After beating up this nerve, we go ahead and steal one of his rocks. Over on the SSM, we run as a rando again, schmoozing at a cocktail party. He's bragging that he's caught over 148,000 different Pokemon, but he still only has four on his team rando. Who are you trying to impress? And now it's time for our Odos to face off against one another. After connecting with a Thunderfang, rando heals up on the following turn. And then another two, take it down. Out next is his Starbra, who we can manage to take out with just one shot. When Charizard comes in, we go for a crunch, doing about 45%, as a Fire Fang does just a little bit to us. On the following turn, we get it way down into the red, as an Ember does a lot more damage to us than the Fire Fang does. But one more crunch takes it out. His final Pokemon, Manicate, comes in. Going for a Glare, we get the Paralysis off as he throws us around the entire world. A Thunder Fang brings him down just below half as he goes for a Swagger, confusing us. Not wanting to risk punching ourselves in the face, we swap out into Coral. We're on the following turn, we can go for a Bulldoze, grabbing the KO, defeating Rando. Over in Vermilion City, we fish up a Tentacool. And that means now it's time for us to take on Lieutenant Surge and his electric Pokemon. He starts off with Volpe, and we send in Coral. A Bubble does a decent amount of damage to us as we go for a Bulldoze, bringing him way down into the red. On the following turn, Surge goes ahead and heals up, and then he does again on the next turn. And after we get Volpe down into the red a third time, he swaps out into Picolet, who gets Oko'd. Volpe comes in going for a Metal Claw, doing barely anything to us, and we take it down. When Rybuzz comes in, I'm honestly a little scared if this thing starts setting up double teams, but he decides to just keep going for quick attacks for some reason. And I'm not really sure why, but it only takes two for us to take him down, and we earn our Thunder Badge. Grab ourselves an Eoran over on Route 9. On Route 10, we grab a Sandshrew. A Magnemite inside of the Power Plant. In Rock Tunnel, we grab a Zubat. Then we grab our Hone Edge. We also go ahead and grab our Noibat Egg on 8 of Volpix, a Meowth over on Route 7. Next up, we grab our Eevee. On 16, we grab ourselves a Murkrow, and then finally a Dratini from the game corner. Before facing off against Rando again in Lavender Town, we're going to start fusing out some of our friends. First, Murkrow and Hoot Hoot get ourselves a little Hoot Crow. After fusing together, our little Hoot Crow is going to go ahead and grow up just a little bit into a Knock Crow. Next up, we're going to go ahead and fuse up Eevee with Nidoran and get ourselves the adorable little Eran. Next up, Eran's going to go ahead and start evolving a few times. First, into Irino. Then we're going to start stoning it up a little bit. First, we're going to go with the Sunstone to have it evolve into the little gorgeous little Esrino. And then with the Moonstone, he's going to grow up to be big and burly into S-King. And then finally, Noodles is going to evolve as well, turning himself into a Tanape. We then run into Rando, who's over in the Pokemon Tower, and he wants to fight. Seems really aggressive, and I'm not sure why. He sends out Kyoto, and we send an S-King. Going for an Ice Beam, we go ahead and grab ourselves the one-shot KO. When Starbra comes in next, we can go ahead and go for Thunderbolt, grabbing the kill. His unfused Gyarados comes in intimidating us, but we shall not be intimidated by terrorists. And we take it down in just one shot before Charsaur comes in. Going for a side beam because now it's poison and not grass, we get ourselves the Yoko and defeat Rando. 
Outside of these sewers, we find Rando beating up two rocket grunts who then retreat into the murky waters. Rando says that there's no way he's going to be getting these new pants dirty, so he goes to the Celadon department store to go buy himself some waiters. He'll smell you later, because he means it, because we're going to go into a sewer. While fighting our way to the rocket base, our coral is going to go ahead and evolve into a Garriler. After fighting our way to the back of a rocket base, we find that Giovanni has kidnapped the local gym leader. How dastardly. I'm still not entirely sure why Team Rocket has a secret base under Celadon City or what they're even doing in the first place, but I do know that kidnapping is wrong, and the battle begins. Sending it as king against his Arnix, we manage to take it down with just one side beam. His haunt cons in next, so I swap into Not Crow, taking a Shadow Ball. Another Shadow Ball brings me down just below 50%, and an Assurance knocks him down below half. After a Sucker Punch gets us down pretty low, one more Assurance takes him down. His final Pokemon, Ryros, comes in, and swapping in the Noodle, we can take a Rock Blast like it's nothing. Going for a Cross Chop, we bring it way down into the red, as a chip away does some decent damage to us. Giovanni then heals up with a max potion, and after just two more hits, we take down Giovanni and save Erica. Before we leave the sewers, we go ahead and grab ourselves a Grimer. Before facing off against Erica, I stop by to beat up this nerd again and steal another rock. All right, it's time for us to face off against Erica and her grassy goons. She's gonna start off with the Exeggie Duo, and I'm gonna send in Nacro. Going for a wing attack, we get him down pretty low as a seed bop comes in, doing a lot more than I honestly expected. She withdraws her Exeggy Duo, and we go ahead and go for a fly, grabbing ourselves the Oko. Exeggy Duo comes back in, and we can take it out with another wing attack. Vile Bell comes in last, and going for a wing attack, we do just under 50%. We get to fly to avoid the solar beam, and then one more fly takes it down, and our little crow saves the day. In Pokemon Tower, we grab a Haunter. And then we find Mr. Fuji at the top of Pokemon Tower. It turns out he created the Master Ball, and Silphco has been invaded by Team Rocket, and someone should stop them. But then he gives us a flute. Do 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 do. I'm playing a flute, flute. Poke 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 flute. Gonna jump out and eat up up up. Eating bears and eating stuff, and we're gonna have ourselves a Snorlax. Kalala for the door, do. Gonna go go do do do. On Route 12, we grab ourselves a Venonat. I go ahead and grab my Goodrag before I forget, and then we grab ourselves a Poliwhirl over on 15. Before facing off against Koga, our steam is going to start evolving, first into a Blastmelian, and then finally into the absolutely miraculous Blastizard. And I really love the way that the shell is kind of turned into a harness for the blasters coming just above the wings. It's really cool. Noodle is also going to go ahead and evolve, transforming into its final form of Tanape. And look at that mustache. Then Two Mouse is going to go ahead and evolve and remain... Oh my gosh, he only has one mouth now, but that Cobra is scary. Welcome to the team, Pitbuck. Oh, never mind, this one still has two mouths, so we're going with that one. I love this, like, Chimera hawk thing. It's really neat. And after fighting our way down and around, we find ourselves a Venipede in the Safari Zone. All right, it's time for stick on Koga and his poison Pokemon. He's going to start off with Venomer, and I'm going to send in Steam. Going for a flamethrower, we go ahead and get Venomer down super low as Koga goes ahead and heals up with his super potion. And after a second one, we can take it down. Out next comes Magnifig, which we can go ahead and take out in just one shot. When Beether comes in next, we can go for an Ice Beam, getting it down pretty low as he sets up a layer of Toxic Spikes. Withdrawing Beether, he goes ahead and sends in Chinook, and we can go for a Flamethrower. Going for a Will-O-Wisp, Takedown does some damage, but not a whole hell of a lot because of the burn. Swapping out and sending in Xavier, I'm going to go ahead and get poisoned by the Spikes as he goes ahead and sets up an Acid Armor. A Psychic takes him way down into the red as he misses a Takedown, luckily for me. Withdrawing Chinook, he goes ahead and sends Beether back in, and a Psychic takes the B down. Chinook comes back in just for one more Psychic to take it out, and with that, we've defeated Koga. After saving everybody in Silphco, we go ahead and grab our Lapras. After fighting our way through Silphco, we run into Rando yet again, insisting that he has captured that many Pokemon, but he can't use them because they're all trapped inside of these weird little balls. He opens up his jacket to reveal that he has hundreds of Tamagotchis clipped to the inside of his clothes. My guy, those aren't Pokemon. Managing to poison us with a Poison Sting, we go for a Psychic, grabbing the Oko. When Charizard comes in, another Psychic takes it down no problem. 
Nexus is on to use Tauros, who uses a workup as we go for a Psychic, bringing him down just below half. And Stupid Me stays in as a takedown takes out our first Pokemon of the run. We send in two Malsus to Tauros misses his next turn, and we take it out with a Crunch. With Electados in, I go for a Thunderfang, doing basically nothing to it, as a Discharge smacks the crap out of us, activating our Berry. Still not sure why I haven't swapped out, I go for a Fly, doing basically nothing, so then we send in Coral. After missing a bunch of Ice Fangs, we finally connect, getting him way down into the red, and on the following turn, we can KO the Electados, sending in his final Pokemon, Starbra. After getting confused, we managed to break through for a crunch, outcoing it, defeating Rando. After defeating Rando, I tell him that the Silph President will be able to help him bring his Tamagotchis to life and make them real Pokemon if he helps me defeat Team Rocket and get them out of Saffron. And Rando agrees. And the double battle begins. Primarino and Ryros come out against Noodles and Nita GI. After missing my first attack, they double in a Noodle, taking me down to just about half. On the following turn, I go for a cross drop, bringing the Ryros way down into the red as Nino Giot goes for Primarino for some reason. After I get doubled into again, we're gonna swap out into Steam, as Giovanni heals up the Ryros. Now with Primarino way down into the red, I go for a Surf, grabbing the KO on it, and bringing Ryros down below half. A Stone Edge brings Steam down pretty low, so I'm gonna swap out, setting in Coral once Gencon comes in. And Giovanni swaps into Sand Queen. After taking a Dark Pulse, Nita Giant goes for a Thrash again on Sand Queen as she sets up a Sandstorm. After everybody misses their attacks, I manage to take down the Gencom with a Crunch as the Sand Queen goes for a Dig. Coral takes the Dig as I go for an Aqua Tail, Okoing the Ryros. And after just a couple more turns, we successfully take down the Sand Queen and defeat Giovanni. And we're gonna grab ourselves a Cyndaquil from the president of Silco. With access to the Goldenrod department store, we can finally go ahead and evolve Fedora into his final form. And Knockcrow is awesome. I love the colors mixing on these two. And now it's time for us to take on Sabrina and her psychic Pokemon. She starts off with Hipmime, who's like a really cool dude, and I send in Fedora. He goes to set up a Nasty Plant, and then he sets up a second one as I just keep on spamming Foul Play. He then Baton passes into a Labro, where a Foul Play knocks him way down into the red, and after Sabrina heals up, two more hits take it down. When Estrion comes in and sets up a Light Screen, I go for a Foul Play followed by a Fly, taking it way down into the red. Estrion then heals up with a Moonlight, and after just two more attacks, we can take it down while only taking a little bit of damage ourselves. Once Gen Kazam comes in, I go for a foul play, which is quite effective, and we get the Oko. Hipmime then comes back in, going for a Hypnosis, putting me to sleep, so I swap out into Coral. After setting up a Nasty Plot and going for a Psychic, bringing Coral way down, I can go for a Crunch, grabbing the KO, defeating Sabrina. Before facing off against Blaine, we gotta fill up the last spot in our team. So we're gonna go ahead and fuse up Magnazone with Nine Tails to get ourselves Magna Tails. Pokemon Mansion, we grab ourselves a Growlithe. Next up is gonna be Blaine in his Fire Pokemon. He starts off with Glue Dash and I send in Steam. Going for a Flamethrower, we do about 50% as the Glue Dash sets up a Toxic. After another Flamethrower, we get it down to basically nothing. And I swap into Magna Tails, tanking a Solar Beam. Blaine then heals up, and I take the opportunity to go for a Nasty Plot. A Discharge then brings him down pretty low, getting the Paralysis as he sets up another Solar Beam, and we can safely take it down. Magdon's out next, so I swap out into Coral. As a Drill Run does basically nothing, and on the following turn he sets up a Confuse Ray. Managing to break through, we go for an Earthquake for the KO. Chardactyl comes in next, and this thing has so many cool sprites, I don't know why the game defaulted to its basic one, but whatever, I guess. A Hyper Beam comes in doing about 50%, and I manage to smack myself in the face instead of setting up a Dragon Dance. On the following turn, I just go for the Aqua Tail, getting the KO. When 9-9 comes in, one more Aqua Tail, gets the Yoko, and we defeat Blaine. 
over in Mount Ember, I run into Team Rocket again, and I guess they were trying to do a triple fusion this whole time? I had no idea. But they managed to catch all three Kanto Legendary Birds, fusing them together into Zappo Kuno, a bird so super that Giovanni will be able to take over the entire Kanto region and beyond. Unless we, a child, stop him first. And that's what we're gonna do. Setting a holographic against Apple Kuno. Setting up a nasty plot, we immediately get Haze away, which is super annoying, so I decide to just go for a discharge, bringing Articuno and Moltres way down into the red and Zapdos down to about half. After I get smacked down super low, we go for another discharge, KOing Articuno as Moltres heals up a little bit with his Rue so he can hold on. Now down to just 11 HP, we're gonna swap out into Coral as Moltres heals back up again. After taking a flamethrower, Zapdos heals up as well. And then we can take Moltres back down super low with another Aqua Tail and KO it on the following turn. With Zapdos back at full, we start going for Dragon Dances. And after setting up two, a couple of crunches, KO the Zapdos, and we defeat Giovanni. All right, before we head back to Guardian City to take on Giovanni, we're gonna go ahead and capture our birds, starting off with Moltres. Actually pausing for a second from our birds, we're gonna go ahead and grab all of our fossils. So first we're gonna grab Ammonite, Aerodactyl, Anorith, Praniados, and finally Tyrant. Okay, cool, picking back up with the birds, we go ahead and grab Articuno next. Then finally in the power plant, we grab Zapdos. Well, 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 we meet again, Giovanni, formerly of Team Rocket. He starts off with his Ryros and we send in Coral. After setting up three Dragon Dances, we go for an Aqua Tail, Oko into Ryros. When Glystar comes in, it, Gochamp, Rylax, and Electric Trio all go down in one, and we claim our Earth Badge. For our last two encounters where we finalize our team, first we find an Onyx on Victory Road, and then we also swing over to grab Entei. We're gonna go ahead and fuse up Raichu with Gudra, and the result, I absolutely adore Guchu. He's riding on his own tail, and it's so much goo. Alrighty then, let's go ahead and take a look at our final team before we face off against the Elite Four. First up, we have Holographic with Flamethrower, Discharge, Will-O-Wisp, and Nasty Plot. Fedora with Fly, Night Slash, Zen Headbutt, and Roost. Noodles with Power Whip, Close Combat, Knock Off, and Stomping Tantrum. Goobert with Dragon Pulse, Thunderbolt, Ice Beam, and Flamethrower. Coral with Earthquake, Crunch, Aqua Tail and Dragon Dance. And finally, Steam with Surf, Ice Beam, Will O Wisp, and Flamethrower. First up on the list is going to be Lorelei and her freezing powerful moves. Uh, she's going to start things off with Magmargon, and we're going to go and set in Holographic. I'm going to set up with a nasty plot as she goes ahead and uses Bubble Beam, which is super effective. Another Bubble Beam is going to get us down, which is annoying, and we're going to go for a Discharge, grabbing the KO. Up next comes Weaver Ross, who goes for an embargo, and that's fine because I already used my item. Tens of casters out now, and an icicle crash does barely anything as a discharge comes in grabbing the KO. Mom Bro is out now, and we're gonna go for a flamethrower grabbing the KO. And finally, Jin Growth comes in just in time to go for a smoochie kiss, and we go for a flamethrower destroying Lower Lie just like that. Up next is going to be Bruno and his fighting Pokemon. He starts off with Mavire, and we're going to send in Fedora. Setting up the Focus Energy, we can go for a Fly, getting a Crit, and getting an Oko. When Magnetics comes in, we're going to swap out a Fedora, sending in Noodle. A Power Whip takes him down pretty low, as Bruno uses his first Full Restore, and then his second. And then after using a Knockoff to break it austerity, we can take it down after a third. Marachan's out next, and I know that this thing has counter, but we get lucky getting the Oko and not having to worry about it. When Steechamp comes in, two stomping tantrums take it down quickly enough, leading into Psycross, who I completely underestimate here, and a close combat KOs my big noodle boy. Setting in Fedora, we take an X Scissor, activating our berry, going for a fly, getting the KO, defeating Bruno. And this is gonna lead into Agatha and her ghost Pokemon. She sent in Mizbat, and we send in Fedora. Going for a Night Slash, we take him down pretty low, and after she heals up on the following turn, we get the KO in one. When Gendu comes in next, it only takes one to take him out. 
when Snorgar comes in. We get it down to about 50% as he sets up a curse. With the increased defense, we don't quite get the KO, which does mean that Agatha's gonna heal up. And after trading back and forth for a little while and using Roost to heal ourselves up, we take it down. Up uh, next is Umter, who can resist our Night Slashes. So after healing up, we go for a fly, bringing him down really low. And on the following turn, we can go for another one and take him out, even though it healed up with Moonlight. Her final Pokemon, Wubgar, is in, going for a curse, which is gonna allow it to stay up after our first Night Slash. But after our second, we take it down, defeating Agatha. Lance is the final member of the Elite Four, and him and his Dragon Pokemon are ready for us. He starts off with Dragados, and I send it in Steam, where a quad effective Ice Beam can take it down in one shot. When Togenite comes in, an Ice Beam takes it down to about half, as an Outrage does about the same to us. But the only difference, I'm faster, and we take it out. Tyranodactyl is in next, knocking us way down into the red, as we heal a little bit up with our Berry, and we do just under half with an Ice Beam. We then swap out, sending in Holographic as Lance heals up. And a head smash grabs the Oko on our Holographic. This thing is the toughest thing that Lance has. I hate this Pokemon. We send in Coral, getting the Intimidate off as Lance heals up again. This time it sets up an Agility for some reason. And after setting up, we can get the Oko with an Aqua Tail. Pori Draw comes in next, and we go for an Earthquake, grabbing the Yoko, which is going to lead into Typhnare, who doesn't stand a chance. And with that, we're moving on to the Champion Battle. As we enter the Champion Chamber, we can see that the entire thing is lined, floor to ceiling, with hundreds of thousands of Tamagotchis, each with their little pixel screens blinking in unison for food. Rando proclaims that he has captured all 216,225 Pokemon in existence as of this recording. But Rando, these are not Pokemon. They're Tamagotchis. Rando scoffs. How dare you speak ill of my children. I will end you now. After taking a wing attack, it only takes one Thunderbolt to take him out, leading into his right mortar. We then swap into Coral, as a drill run does basically nothing to us. We go for an Earthquake on the following turn, but he gets the burn off, so we do basically nothing. Rando then uses his first full restore, and we go for an Aqua Tail, bringing him down pretty low. And on the following turn, one more takes him down. The burn then brings us down below half, activating our berry as Charizard comes in next. We're gonna swap out, sending in Fedora, as a Slash does some decent damage to us. On the following turn, we get knocked down below half, activating our berry. SSN Headbutt gets him down to about half. Rando then heals up again, and I miss my fly, getting knocked way down into the red. So we swap out again, sending in steam. Going for a surf because this thing ain't grass anymore, a slash does a good amount of damage to us as the fire spin brings us down to about half. And Rando heals up again with another full restore. And after Rando runs through all of his full restores, it only takes a few surfs for us to take him down. When Electados comes in, we swap out, sending Goobert back in as it sets up the Rain Dance. A Thunder Punch does basically nothing to us, as an Ice Beam brings him down just below half. Rando then swaps out into Tortor as another Ice Beam does about a third to it. Following up with a Thunder Ball on the other turn, we can take it down. Once Star Kazam comes in, it goes for a Surf, and even though it's not very effective, it does a surprising amount of damage to us, activating our Berry, but we can take it out in just one. And once Electados comes in and tries to set up a Dragon Dance, it only takes one more Ice Beam for us to take down Rando's final Pokemon and become the Kanto League Champions. And that, my friends, is how I beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Infinite Fusion for the first time ever on classic mode. That's crazy. I can't believe I've never done this before. It was so much fun to just play the game regular with mostly just the Gen 1 and 2 Pokemon. But anywho, if you liked the video, please make sure you show your support down below, whether it's liking, subscribing, leave a comment, telling your friends something. But thank you all so much for supporting me over this last year, and I hope I can keep on making cool Pokemon videos for you all this year and beyond. But anywho, I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.